Hey there, Farmer Brown. What, what you looking at? Shh. Not so loud. Lucy's trying to pick me a winner. A winner? A winner of what? Yeah, see that Wall Street Journal daily paper there on the ground? Yeah, yeah, what's it doing there? Well, Lucy's about to pick me another big winner. A big winner? I still don't follow you. A big winner of what? She's gonna pick another winning stock for me. See, every three months or so, I lay the pages of the Wall Street Journal down there, the ones that show all the major stocks, and she picks me a money maker every time. Are you kidding me? Not at all. I used to work with one of those big shot stockbrokers down in one of those high rise buildings downtown. Boy, was that a mistake. I lost more money working with that guy than I ever did over the years. I let Lucy pick stocks for me one time and it was a big winner. So ever since then, Lucy's been picking my stocks for me. You know, I gotta tell you, that sounds crazy. I mean, are you telling me that a chicken picks better stocks than a professional stockbroker does? Do you see that fancy car in the driveway over there that Martha's been driving? Yeah. Well, Lucy picked a big winner for me two years ago. And in about six months, I had enough money to pay cash for it. That, that's, that's unbelievable. Shh. She's about to pick another winner. Watch closely. Ha! There it is again. Another big winner just waiting for me. Well, Bill, I gotta go. One thing I've learned over the years, when Lucy picks a winner, you don't wait around. It could split tomorrow. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, that's crazy. Hey, hey, Farmer Brown, wait. Can I put some money on Lucy's pick too? Well, I hope you enjoyed our Farmer Brown skit. It certainly makes me laugh every time I see it. However, what's not funny is how many people pick stocks today. On the one hand, you have some investors who let their stockbroker choose which stocks they should put their hard-earned money into. On the other hand, you have other investors who simply choose a stock based on if they use and like a company's product. <laughs> Both of these methods can prove to be disastrous. So here are my five keys to successfully investing in stocks. Key number one, decide if you're going to do your own research or if you'd rather pay someone else to do it for you. In my experience, it's easier to let a stockbroker pick stocks for you, but you will learn a lot by doing the research of a company yourself. If you're a do-it-yourselfer, you'll want to use a discount brokerage firm. If you want recommendations, it may be worthwhile to use a full-service broker. Key number two, understand what a P.E. ratio is and what it means before you invest a penny. The P.E. ratio stands for the stock's price divided by its earnings per share. It's a simple way to see how expensive a stock is relative to how much money it's making its investors. As an example, if a company is currently trading at, let's say, $34 a share and earnings over the last 12 months are $1.45, per share, the P.E. ratio for the stock would be 23.44. $34 divided by $1.45 equals 23.44. In general, if a P.E. ratio is under 20 to 25, the stock would be considered a good buy, with good dividends paid out and future growth potential. If, however, the P.E. ratio is over 25, you may be paying a premium for a stock that is paying very low dividends and may not have any real growth potential for the future. Key number three, decide in advance if you are an investor or a trader. If you're an investor, be sure to average into your stock. You should almost never put all of your money into a stock at one time. Put in small amounts on a regular basis. You are now dollar cost averaging whether the stock goes up or down in the near future. If you're a trader, you're playing for the short term, which means that you think a stock will increase quickly. If that happens, great. Get out and take your profit. If it doesn't, take your lump soon and get out. Never make the mistake of taking yourself or having yourself hang in there too long if you're trying to make money quickly as a trader. Key number four, look for good dividend paying stocks. In today's low interest rate environment, a solid company that will be around for the long term will pay you more than you could earn at the bank. Plus it gives you the potential for future stock growth down the road. Companies like McDonald's, Microsoft, and Coca-Cola aren't glamorous, but they're solid companies with nice, stable, and growing dividends. By the way, if you want to uh, supercharge your returns, set up a DRIP account, which is Dividend Investment Program or Dividend Reinvestment Plan.
You will find that by doing this, you will turbocharge your wealth. And key number five is to find a true financial advisor to work with. Even if you're going to manage your own stock investing and research, you shouldn't confuse managing a stock portfolio with true financial planning. There is a big difference. So find and work with a trusted financial advisor to balance out all aspects of your investment strategy and estate planning. Investing in stocks can be a fun and rewarding experience, but it can also be a worrisome and disappointing journey. Follow these five steps and you'll have a much better chance at making money in the stock market versus losing sleep and precious time as well as money during the many ups and downs of this giant roller coaster ride. And to help you in becoming a wiser and more savvy investor, be sure to log on to our website and download our free report, The Truth About Stocks. This in-depth report will give you the knowledge and tools you need to make good decisions when investing in stocks. Finally, tune into our weekly show, Checks and Balances TV, every week for the balanced truth you need to financially succeed. I'm Matthew J. Reddick, host of Checks and Balances TV. Thanks for watching this special edition of CBTV. And remember, you can become financially independent. You just need confidence and determination. Until next week, dump debt, invest wisely, believe in yourself, and make it happen.